Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including Mysticons, which we'll be getting into right now. I'm Dylan Heisen, and today I'm joined by Delaney Stovall. Hey, y'all. And April Collins. Hello. Uh, Mysticons is back, and we are talking- Thank God. Thank God, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, here to save us. We are talking the latest episode that aired um, yesterday. It airs Saturdays at 8 a.m. on Nicktoons. Uh, what a great time. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> save, save the date, episode 28. This is the first episode in a few weeks, uh, but we talk Mysticons whenever it's new. should be new for at least a little while every week. And uh, find us at OverlyAnimated.com. Uh, if you're listening to this on YouTube, you can subscribe to not miss any of our Mysticons podcasts. You can also subscribe on iTunes. Search for Mysticons Overly Animated um, to find our Mysticons specific feed. Uh, spoilers for Save the Date and all previous episodes of Mysticons. This isn't a big, big plotty episode, but there are some, uh, prior to this, so make sure you're caught up. Uh, uh, and yeah, let's get into things. Delaney, what did you think of Save the Date? Okay, so I had like secondhand embarrassment so bad watching this episode. Like, I just wanted to like <laughs> punch Malmore on Arcane. I was like, why do y'all suck? Zarya is the best part of the episode, obviously. Though Tasma was also really great in this episode. Like the fact that she's snuck stuck in a snow globe is so funny. <laughs> she's just so bad. And like it's just so great. Like it's so stupid. It's such a dumb concept. Yeah, it's hilarious. And I think this was a really great like use of like this B plot. I really enjoyed the B plot, which normally like Doug B plot isn't the best, but no, <laughs> Tasma breaking out and like running around was fabulous. And then every time Zarya said sis, I was just like, oh, <laughs> yes. Also, obviously, like the headline is that Malvron and Arcana kiss finally. And I love how the Mysticons are in the background being weird. And then even uh, <laughs> Hyper was like, why are y'all weird? And I was like, this is so good. And then, OK, wait, wait, wait. No, the actual important part of the episode is they said fleek in Bay. And I was like, what are we doing right now? <laughs> I was too st- like I was so stunned from Fleek that Bay was like you can- and then they said Bay twice. I was like, please, like I'm still recovering from you saying Fleek. Like, what are you doing? But yeah. I really, I really liked the episode. Like, it was dumb, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> okay, that's that's a good sl- summary. <laughs> <laughs> April, what did you think of Save the Day? Well. So I was expecting a wedding and I didn't get it. And <laughs> oh yeah, Melbourne and Arcane just get married. Okay. <laughs> oh, I mean there was like a tiny wedding reference, but like it literally took me until like halfway through the episode for me to get the title of the episode. I was like, oh, because they're on a date and they're the, the, the Mystic yeah, are yes. trying to save oh, it. I was, it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, but also there is a, like a wedding theme throughout with I'm the, shook. Yeah. Yeah. But it took me like I literally had a moment it where I was I didn't just, get it till just now when you said it. <laughs> oh well I feel a lot better then because I like I did it. I had like an epiphany in the middle of the episode and I was like, oh wait, I get it. Cause I was still like really bitter <laughs> that it wasn't like wedding. <laughs> and but uh uh what is it? I very like I was very skeptical about like the Doug and Tasma. Also, I agree that Tasma is amazing trapped in a snow globe. And I like that she had snowman Jeff to keep her company. And then I was sad at the end of the episode because he wasn't there anymore. And I was like, Oh, I guess she doesn't get her friend back. That's that's upsetting. But uh but yeah, like their date was so awkward and it just made it worse because they kept saying it's not a date. I think I started a counter at one point, but I don't remember where we ended up at. But at least, uh, five. <laughs> at least five, if not more. Um, but I mean, it was it was a good episode. Like it was so awkward, though. And uh, I just I couldn't get over the awkwardness of their date. But it was it was fine. And I I liked uh, like the the song or whatever yeah. oh yeah uh, that was cute. yeah that was cute too or i thought it was very cute so but it, i mean it was all right um i i think i would have liked something more considering we've been on such a huge break with them and i guess i don't know but it was a good episode yeah this was not a good episode to come back from with from a two-month-long hiatus i don't it was not planned this way by the, it's by not the team. cliffhanger yeah, yeah. The, the the we we uh, Nick almost got it right there. Le- if you broke a week earlier, that would have actually been the end of season break. But this is just randomly after the premiere of season three. Um, yeah, this is uh, save the day. Definitely one of our most like plot in sequential episodes of the show. Up there with uh, the gum lump episode. 
Uh, this is I, better than Gun Pulpit, though, at least. Yeah, I think I think I agree. I yeah. wasn't I wasn't there at first. I, I didn't really enjoy it that much on first viewing, but on subsequent viewings, I think it clicked a little more. It is very funny, and uh, there's a lot happening here, even if kind of the main concepts of the episode are like the weakest parts. Like as we've mentioned, like the Doug B plot is actually the highlight of the episode. The uh, Zarya M and Piper, they're barely in the episode, but the the little stuff they're doing is really great. It's the uh, Uzi Q. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> who I don't did not land at all for me, and uh, Arcana Malveron, the the main focus of the episode. They've never really been an engaging couple to us, and uh, I thought they were fine here. It was just not that interesting. Um, so, like, I think that's the problem with the episode is um, Arcana Malveron isn't that great, and Uzi Q is. Um, uh, borderline disaster, but she's fine, I guess. She's, she's, I didn't, like, I don't end up hating her. I just don't care at all about her. Like, I'd rather discuss Same. almost everything else that happens in the episode. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think the other thing is that maybe this episode would be a whole lot more satisfying if we had built up this relationship more. Right. Like, I am so looking forward to Moon Boon's first date because Yay. that's going to be amazing. <laughs> but, like, this one, like, Maybe, like, once every, like, ten episodes or something like that, we would, like, hint at, like, oh, Malveron and Arcana like each other. But there is, like, no buildup to make this, like, pay off. Well, the thing so, is, we had, like, three moments, but then it's, like, you're just supposed to be, like, oh, well, that's the main guy and the main girl. They're going to end up together. And you're just, like, really? Yeah. Like, and it's just, like, a super kind of, like, tropey episode, too. Like, oh, the main guy and the main girl go on their first date. It's super awkward and how can everyone save it like i don't know again i think it would have just paid off a little bit more if like we had actually built up this relationship but it's kind of one of those where like it's like okay we want to make this relationship a thing how can we do it in one episode done so yeah. very very sort of rushed for me Right. I, I, the, the, the big problem, I think, with the concept of the episode is there's three main couples in the show, and this is, like, by far the least interesting of the three. Um, you know, you got uh, Em and Casey and uh, Zarya and Kitty, and both of those have, like, jumped off the page a lot more than Arcana Malveron, uh, which uh, has, as you guys mentioned, has not been shown that much even in the show. And we had a previously on, which basically covered every single moment uh, of Arcana Malveron in the series. Their, By the way, enti- <laughs> their entire relationship summed up in, like, two minutes. Yeah, I yeah. really hated the previously on. That was, like, uh, this is, it's, it's really bad that the... The non-plot episodes had previously on, but um, but on the other hand, we did not get a transformation sequence, so I'll take it. Uh, I'd, I'd ra- I'd ra- it was ra- like a tiny one where their gloves came on. That, that was, was great. Good. I loved it. <laughs> I liked it. Yeah, yeah, I liked but, it too. <laughs> let's, let's do that. Yeah, if 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 that's the cost of having the be- the dumb previously on, that's fine. But um, yeah, all, all we got from Arcana Malvron uh, before this is uh, the season one finale, episode thirteen, which was big for them. Then we had Quest of the Vexed, where they kind of wall uh, in while like under the influence of us of the anger talk about their feelings for one another and then in the recent season two finale they have a brief moment at the end and that's like the entirety of their relationship um so it hasn't been developed that much on on the show like there's no there's no like sl- like mist like moon boon is uh zarya and kitty is kind of like a slow burn we it's we've got these moments peppered throughout um and like we're not like escalating it to this point like this one and also that just jumps off the the screen more at you where uh because it's um it's kind of this novel representation whereas arcana malvron is pretty is your pretty standard uh main guy main girl fair and uh, it, it, it really just doesn't pop up to this point. It's like, it's fine. Um, I think a, a big problem is Malvron's not that great of a character. Arcana's gotten a lot better. And I think this is a really interesting episode for Arcana. It like, shows us a side of her that we hadn't seen that much before of her being just super awkward. Uh, but Really great. Yeah. but yeah, it's, it's, I enjoyed awkward. But like, Malvron's yeah. like, not a person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which I think is kind of the main problem. Uh, then again, Casey isn't that much of a person either. Uh, yeah, but we care things. about Casey way more. Like that's the thing. Yeah, which I think is well, true. I'm not. Casey's su- a sweetheart, and he does cute things. Yeah, C- Casey's just kind of the, um, the you know the typical g- good looking guy, and he's nice, and and that's endeared him. Malvron. Um, I don't know. I guess we expect more of that character because he's more of a prominence on the show. Like, uh, whereas Casey's just, he is what he is. And, uh, he's, yeah. he's just this, this, this side character. And he's doing a great job fulfilling that. <laughs> yeah, <role>. exactly. Like- <laughs> 
Yeah, so it's I don't, that, that that's like the main thing. I do think uh, this episode definitely improves Arcane and Malvron. I really didn't need this. Like, it, I don't have a problem with breather episodes. Um, I do think the sh- show has struggled with breather episodes. I think that um, the the gum lump episode is potentially the worst episode of the show, although it's still very funny. But uh, like that 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 and this are the only ones that have nothing to do with anything. And I really just wish we focused on different things. Like, we don't need to do big plot things, but why couldn't we use this time to do the, uh, to do Zarya and Kitty instead, which we care a lot more about? Or, uh, you know, do, do something else. So I, f- I feel like, uh, that, that's the frustrating part of this. Not necessarily that we're not doing anything plot, uh, plot related. It's just that we spend our time with the, with this, this Uzi Q, uh, instead. Um, but and she's but- terrifying. Yeah, okay, we'll talk about her. But let's, let's, okay, let's, let's uh, dive into Arcana Malvron a little bit more first. Um, because, yeah, we have their big kiss moment at the end of the episode. Uh, were we, did we like their, them kissing? I texted my girlfriend. I was like, they kissed, and she was like, <gasps> shook. <laughs> why, why are we shook? At, at, I think she's just shocked it happened already. Like, I also don't well, know yeah. if she's making fun of me. Who knows? <laughs> uh, but, I, like, was just, like, finally just kiss already or whatever. Like, they're cute. Like, I was a little irritated. got interrupted, like, previously, so it's nice. Though it was dumb. When Malron's like, what did you want to tell me earlier? It's like, she already told you, you dumb dumb. <laughs> God. Yeah. Um, I will say this. We now had two out of the three main couples kiss now. We had uh, Em and Casey earlier. And uh, this kind of clears the way for Moon Boon to uh, shine through the rest of uh, the uh, the season. My soul will leave and from the mist my body. They arise. <laughs> the main theme that Uzi Q seems to try to provide for Arcana Malvron is this concept of uh, of uh, like Arcana needs to tell him uh, her feelings. And uh, it's kind of like ends up being a parable episode of like, be honest. So with- weird. <laughs> <laughs> like, is that this is the purpose of Uzi Q? Is I reading this right? Yeah, I think uh, so. I was maybe. so weird. She just left. And I was like, what was the point of all of this? Where did she go? That's what I want to know. Also, like, we need to, like, take <laughs> care of her. <laughs> like, wait, also, wait, wait, wait. When are we going to learn, like, not to mess up potions? Yeah. This yeah, happens, this been a few like, times. every week. <laughs> like, stop it. <laughs> I'm I'm stuck on we're concerned about Uzi Q after the episode. She just like <laughs> she just pieces out and uh, where is she going? Who's uh... like, well, like what? She like, probably what? shouldn't be in the sewers. This is questionable. Yeah, exactly. Why didn't they take the time and effort to try and capture her like they did Tasma? Like, okay, it makes sense that you would capture Tasma, but I feel like you should also take the time to capture Uzi Q. Like, she could totally fit in the snow globe with Tasma, and then Tasma would have a friend. Oh my god, I feel like Tasma would just be like, "Can you just kill me?" exactly <laughs> yeah even more so uh yeah good why why aren't we sending uzi q to the magic dimension with the gum lumps or something honestly like, like she is not like she does not need to be running around especially if she eats trash and she gets bigger like yeah, i feel no, like that bad. should be a concern like what if she just gets bored one day and decides to be destructive well, it's not hard for her in the sewer <laughs> I, li- I like the, the viewpoint you guys are bringing to this episode. I watched this three times and I did not have that thought once. <laughs> like, what's happening to her at the end of the episode? <laughs> she just leaves! And I was like, what? Yeah. The whole, okay, the whole episode, I'm like, they're just, like, treating her as an annoyance and not letting I'm like, y'all need to, like, capture her. Like, what are you doing? Well, I think the other thing, too, is, like... They just keep throwing her around. I'm like, y'all... She's gonna like eat somebody. <laughs> she did eat everyone, yes. like every person. But like also her like her purpose of the episode was to I guess be in love with Malveron and then like at the end she's just like, Okay, I can accept this and it's like, why couldn't you have done that? Like halfway through the episode why when you saw that their long? date was be yeah, like their date was going fine and then like you decided to just be disruptive and then at the end you're gonna be understanding i don't get it like who who are you uzi q like what what are you trying to accomplish if she comes back i'm done no, I don't. She's, <laughs> she's not going back don't worry <laughs> yeah okay we'll get to her more in a second but yeah that's the that's i guess what she accomplishes with arcana malvron um the other parts of them they have their date at sky pies um can we like go somewhere else yeah. yeah, can we go somewhere? Like, let's go on another day. Like, we I'm all to- about pizza, but I'm tired of seeing this weird broccoli on pizza, okay? Like, can we, like, <laughs> is there, like, an Italian place? Like, can y'all go get, like, noodles somewhere? Like, why do we gotta go to the pizza place? 
Like, yeah. go get some ramen. There has to be a nicer sushi. place to go eat. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, think, I feel like it's a, it's a decent p- a pick for a casual first date. But um, I'm not sure if we're going there because it was, like, written that way and uh, it's like we want a familiar location or if we just don't have enough, like, locations uh, in terms of, an- like, animation to go to. Um, that, that I will say, I was, I don't typically get annoyed by the animation on the show. And I do think the show looks very good, especially if you watch it in, there's a big difference between watching it in HD and, uh, like standard yeah. D. Um, yeah. but, uh, there were a few times throughout this episode, I noticed kind of reused assets, which, which a little bit annoyed me, like the sky pies date. Um, why did we go here? Uh, the fireworks over the, the palace, um, yeah. which I like, but mm-hmm. we'd seen that several, uh, multiple mm-hmm. times before. Uh, it's, it's just the same thing. Uh, there's this one shot of, uh, Chaco falling on the ground, which, uh, which I think was a from a previous episode. Not that anyone else would notice that. And <laughs> things that we recognize, like there's like, I can't remember his name, but like the, the pops, whatever, like they go and get like the nasty snot balls. The Schnecticus, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, that, that I like is a recurring gag. They also like throw the coin into a uh, snorry dude's yeah. uh, jar, which like, I think, which cool. I think is building to something, that one, but. Yeah, um, no. I like, like, we have these, like, familiar things, but we're getting to a point, like, we need a little bit more. Like, we need, like, have another restaurant. Else. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's those points when I notice kind of the potential resource limitations of the show. Um, but yeah, usually uh, maybe slightly more so in this episode. There were other sequences though that I thought like were really we went crazy. literally everywhere we have except like Necrophis we Lair. This, we went to like the original Mysticons like statue. Yeah, where like, it's, where we, it's really, we really, we really yeah. like. We went uh, to the forest, <laughs> like whatever. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, they had the, oh yeah, the beginning of the episode, Arcane is making the, the potion and they have this, this gag with the cue cards. It's, isn't it a blank day? And we learned that Malvron had the cue cards too. They're so lame. It's adorable. <laughs> uh, she got this <laughs> advice from Teen Cosmoverse. We like that. That's funny. I yeah. enjoy that. Yes. I, yeah. I enjoyed that one too. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, then they're going, I yeah. just enjoy like Zarya ragging on her at every possible moment. It's fabulous. Yeah. Uh, that's good. We have the date montage. Um, we get a, uh, n- a new song used, uh, Le Grand Blue by St- Love X Stereo, if you want to look it that was one great. up. It's the same it one during the song. montage, and then it comes back at the end with the, the kiss scene. And, um, yeah, I, I like, I do like their, uh, the, the, them going on the date everywhere. And then, um, I even like the second montage, uh, yeah. even more with the Zarya M and Piper following them around trying to save the date. Um, oh, I really that, liked that. Yeah, that yeah. was with them. That was with the theme song. Uh, I thought that was a good use of that. And uh, they did not did not have a transformation sequence. We just had the hands up there. So and then, villains uh, sold. Yeah. Also, there's another <laughs> point when in the, between acts two and three, they're like themselves, and then we come back, and then they're missed cons, and we just didn't even have to do the transformation. That was great. Um, I didn't I didn't notice that the first time. Um, and then at the end, uh, yeah, that song comes back, and they're kissing. So. Uh, where do we stand with Arcane and Malvron after after this? Do we care about them more? Eh, not really. No. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, but it's true. It's just so like they could have done so much like better or different things with Arcana or or e- even like we just don't care. I don't care about Malvron. Like he is literally just there. And I guess he's fulfilling a purpose by now being Arcana's boyfriend. But I like if we see more of him and we get to know him more and his character like develops, then okay, sure. But like, I just don't see that happening. Well, like, I didn't care about the buildup at all. Like granted, I am still like, you know, after watching, you know, Avatar and like stuff like that. And you, and you finally get your moment of wait, like, will they or won't they and waiting like five bajillion years. Like I'm, I'm I'm, like, I'm cool with like, they're already dating. Like if we can move forward from here, that'd be awesome. Like, like, everyone can just get a boyfriend or a girlfriend or whatever Piper wants, like, a pet dog or something. Like, <laughs> everyone can be happy. Chaco. Yeah, Ch- like, well, that, that Zarya, Chaco yeah, is Zarya's. Yeah. yeah. But, like, if everyone can just be happy and we do, like, weird stuff, I'm cool with that. Like, we can, like, double date. We can go to a dog park. I don't care. Like, this is cool. I'm cool with this. But, like, I want more movement because, like, I mean, it's like, like, Malvron's not really a character. Like, he's fine. He serves a purpose, but he's not my favorite. Yeah, I do. I do like that they're together now. That'll be yeah, interesting that's what to I'm, see. Huh? That's yeah. the thing that I'm like, this is okay. Because like, I hate the will there one thing when I don't care about it at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's. I think it's going to be cool to see them just as a couple in the background. Same with uh, M and Casey. Yes. 
Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, interested to see how that, that plays out throughout the, the season three. Um, yeah, let's, we already talked a little bit about Uzi Q, um, side effect of this potion that Arcana makes. And, um, yeah, she's, uh, she's, she says stuff like on fleek and bay. And, uh, and then she, Arcana is like, no, he's my bay. And I'm like, I can't handle this right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here comes my, my bay now. Hey, he's my bay, my bay. <laughs> like okay i like uh, how she just shoves malbron like as hard as she possibly can we also we also had zarya speaking of the link uh like uh slang we also had zarya saying uh what you guys look adorkable yeah that was oh, good yeah. that one's a little that older but, but yeah uh oh i loved arcana calling zarya that was actually my favorite part of the episode is her calling <laughs> <Help me. laughs> Yeah, we'll get to get back to that in a second. But Uzi Q, yeah, I, I I'm not a fan. Um, any more positive reactions here? No, she's like, and I don't like her character design. Her like, okay, it's not that I like don't like the voice actor. I just mean the way that she was voice acting made me severely uncomfortable, which I understand was the point, but like it was terrible. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what they're going for. Is yeah, that was the like the point. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I I get that they were doing it, but it was still very, it was too much. It I was think. like, oh god, what's her name in Avatar? <laughs> Who, She's who like obsessed that? with Aang. What is her name? Meng? Yes. <laughs> well, I don't think she's like, no, Meng's much better. Um, yeah, I don't, I, they're going for a specific type of, of, of thing here, and I don't think it really worked, basically. I don't well, know. it's just weird. Like, what was the point of all this? Because <laughs> we needed to, to just get over this, like, hump. We needed to just. Why couldn't they just have it. an awkward date? Like, why do we have to have this? Why, well, yeah, why yeah. couldn't I mean, it have just been a regular awkward date? And then we could have all sat here for 22 minutes and just been like our skin crawling. That would have been great. Yeah, really. I, I would be fine if there was like no monster, but I do think that uh, th- they see it as a fantasy show and it needs some sort of fantasy element every every episode. Also, I think... The the other thing too is with the like the B plot of this episode of like Doug and Tasma, I feel like I might have enjoyed it a little bit more if like Tasma had actually escaped because then that would have like taken us somewhere. You know what I mean? Hmm. Yeah, we, yeah, we we kind of went back to the start at that one. Okay, we can yeah. we can uh, well let's let's get back to that in a second. Let's talk about the okay. um Z- the the brief Zarya M M M and Piper moments. We kind of hit on all of them already because <laughs> they're because they're them standouts. at the craft fair is the best. Yeah, so Zarya gets dragged to the craft fair. So um, as... I relate to Zarya. I also <laughs> do not want to be at a craft fair, but this is the kind of stuff my girlfriend loves, and I'm like, no. <laughs> Will Kitty like craft fairs and try to drag Zarya to them? I doubt it. So yeah, I don't think so. Um, but they and- may they may go to like uh, make Piper happy. So. Yeah, feel in, like. indulge little sis, and mm-hmm. they say M says, uh, "Have fun, you kooky kids." Arcana says, "Thank you, thank you too." Um, and uh, <laughs> Zarya's like, "What? Where are we going?" <laughs> and then just like to the to the craft fair. It's kind of like combining a U two joke with a <laughs> with the where they're going. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, and then uh, my favorite scene of the episode is uh, them at the the craft fair. They're calling Zarya for help, and um, she says anything to anything to escape this nightmare. And uh, M comes up a paper mache castle. Uh, Piper a quote on a wooden plaque. Li- lo- the quote lo- on live- a wooden plaque. Is so good. <laughs> live love levitate. So good. Loved it. Great. Yeah, that's the screen gap. Uh, Very it, relevant. <laughs> yes. It, it, it's uh, yeah, I love that. Also, the the the, the line read on both of those, uh, especially like paper mache castle. Yeah, it's it's, it's wonderful. <laughs> Zarya's exasperation here. Um, we mentioned the other one of uh, yeah, we we the uh, Piper not like getting the. <laughs> The uh, when they're when they're watching them, uh, Piper's like, "You guys are weird." Uh, yeah, that was good. That was very Piper. I loved yeah. it. Yeah, but she is she is dawing at the end along with them. Yes, uh, yes. with the, with the kiss. So I even. just love like the, this juxtaposition of like this weird fantasy show, and then also like the typical like, "Oh, I dropped my phone," and like just shoves him off screen. <laughs> and, like I have to call them, and like it's just so funny. Like I just, it's great. These are like my two favorite things interesting favorite things but yeah i did like that um and uh yeah we'll see if there's any others later but yeah the, I, th- I think the the uh non arcana mysticon moments uh that we got with the other three were were some of the highlights here and we they mentioned their, yeah we mentioned yeah. their montage of them uh with dealing with uzi q 
Uh, that, that was really good. Let's talk this B plot with Doug, uh, Chaco and Tasma. Uh, I have a hot take. Tell me whether you agree. This is okay. the best Doug episode of the show. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Not a hot take. Um, not so, a hot take. Not a hot take. Yeah. We typically hate <laughs> Doug, but he was really good here. Oh, this is funny. And like, I just, it's so funny when he's like, I can't help but feel like this is your fault. And then John was like, are you serious? Yeah. So, so this good. is, so f- um, this is the, our, our, our shtick is this uh, twinkly dragon. So we've evolved from uh, twinkly bear to twinkly, mare. twinkly mare to twinkly dragon. And there's, it's a VR experience now. And they uh, see. So, good. so I have a question. Do we think that Kim Ra stole this VR game in order to play it? Because Probably. that was what I was thinking. <laughs> like, yeah, where's I really Kimra with it? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, man, I hope Kimra's enjoying this. So the next time we see her, she's going to be wearing it. <gasps> yes. Yeah, but they have they have the VR headsets. Chaco has a headset too. <laughs> but it's so funny. It's great. Yeah, the uh, Twinkly Dragons ma- in eight magical dimensions. Um, and there's so many good Tasma reaction lines. Tasma is so <laughs> bad. Like, I know Tasma's evil, but it's so funny. Like, I love her. It's we're, so on, great. we're on Team Tasma in this episode. She's so good. Yes. She says, uh, so this is my life now? Ugh. <laughs> She's so funny. And then to Malvron, she says, whatever, little brother. Crash and burn. Double thumbs down to him. <laughs> like, she sucks. She's so funny. <laughs> Uh, and uh, when Malvron gives Arcana the flower, she says, "Oh, barf!" <laughs> so good, so good, so so bitter. I love it. <laughs> yeah, she and she, as we talked about, she Snowman Jeff is the name of her snowman. <laughs> they I just threw, they just threw that in there. Uh, <laughs> it was perfect. That was so good. <laughs> she's just talking to Snowman Jeff. Uh, the this we have the squeeze activated um, illusion Twinkly Dragon toy. The chest is like mm, magic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, that's what... Doug uh, is so stupid. Yeah, the Tasma tr- uh, tricks them. Uh, do- well, first of all, Doug's okay, like... Okay, she does not trick Chaco. Chaco at no <laughs> yeah, point. Chaco knows what's going on. Yeah, first of all, Doug's like, I smell Twinkly Dragon, which I like. It's one of the senses that... Yeah. <laughs> that you're, uh, yeah, uh, Tasma's like, I knew we didn't have this growing up. And uh, Doug's like, how could you hate all that's pure, good and pure about this world? That's like Doug's character in a summary. And yes. um, yeah, Choco's not, convi- Choco's uh, not convinced. Choco's not convinced. This is relatable to me, though. I wasn't allowed to watch Teletubbies. That's the so. uh, that's the analog to this? Yeah. Anal- Teletubbies. Yeah. Okay. Teletubbies was like... I don't know if you missed after... anything with that. Yeah, I don't think you did that. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't that feel age. that lucked out, honestly. So that's how you're relating to Tasma here. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Chago's not convinced, and Taz- Tasma's innocent face. We like so that. good, adorable. Great. Yeah. Uh, your that, I side- feel like that should have been a runner-up to the screen cap. Yeah, Beatrice <gasps> oh, was pushing yeah. for that, but I like the I like the <laughs> live live love levitate. That was my pick. That was pretty good. Um, you're uh, you're such a cynic, says uh, Doug to Chaco, and then uh, Tasma immediately breaks out, and Doug says, "And don't you dare take this as a validation of your worldview." That was great. My <laughs> best, best Doug line. I think that's the best Doug line in the show. Yeah. It's so that's, good. That's like his character done right. Like that's 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 great. And <laughs> just Ch- Chaco's cynical worldview. Yeah, it, it's. Wonderful. I just love Chaco. It's so great. Yeah, yeah. later Poor Chaco. D- that must be so frustrating because Doug be just didn't idiot, get Doug. it. Well, we've gone like, you need to Chaco. step up your charades game. <laughs> yeah, that was we've gone one. from Chaco just being this adorable, kind of helpful, but like mildly useless, to now Chaco's like all of you are dumb, and it's the best. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, Ch- Chaco is uh, definitely a quality Chaco episode in addition to Doug. And yeah, the Chaco up your charades game, says Doug. Good. And uh, then I, I like how this combines with the A plot. Um, oh, they all end up with the sewer and Malvern's like, Doug? Yeah. <laughs> so good. Yeah, the, for they, they re- Doug retraps Tasma with the magic illusion magic of Twinkly Dragon. That's maybe very maybe smart Doug's smartest moment. Of him. Yeah. <laughs> Right, like Doug, like I'm like, you're not a complete idiot. Oh my god. Yeah, I yeah. was really proud of him in that moment. I was rooting for him. I was so impressed. Yeah, his his uh he's, he's like, My gullible days are over was like monster, and then 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 that combines them and then they immediately get eaten. Which is <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I like uh, how they're eaten, they're in the stomach, and Malvaron's like, You let her escape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, they they have to trick Tasma again with the Trinkly Dragons, make her shoot magic out. 
Um, and, uh, while, while they're in the Uzi Q, um, they, they decide to go, the Mysticons decide to go inside a Mysticon buffet. And my favorite line of the episode, uh, release the heartburn. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> I was dying. <laughs> <laughs> release the heartburn. Because uh, heartburn is terrible. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's it, that's that's the release the, the that was their special attacks inside them. So funny. Um, and uh, oh yeah, we also speaking of the wedding stuff, we also had the uh, Uzi Q with Malveron. We had the stuff with the veil, uh, greasy tinfoil oh, or fishbone. She like compliments him for his attention to detail or something like yeah, that. Yeah, very random. Yeah, <laughs> paper paper. No, like, like, the whole time everyone's like, yeah, and he's playing along, and he's like, I have to get out of here. That was good. Yeah, Uzi Q says, "Marry you, well, eat you, so we can become one." I thought that was that the best was line. good. That was yeah. wonderful. <laughs> and then she also <laughs> like, says, "This yeah. wedding was invite only." That was pretty good. No, yeah. and they like zoom in on them holding hands. Great quality stuff. <laughs> like yeah. Kill Bill sirens. <laughs> yeah, that, that's good. Okay, uh, I, th- I think I think that's it from those scenes. Um, anything else you can think of? For oh yeah, well let's talk about um, Zarya's. We're, we're tracking Zarya's reaction to the, uh, the the sister twist, and she, as Delaney mentioned, she calls uh, Arcane a sis. If, I think twice. It's so cute. My heart swells every time it happens. It's the greatest thing ever, and I love Zarya, and she's such a good sister. In addition, she also, she still calls her princess though. That's good. Yes. Which I feel well, like obviously is obviously you should roast her. I would. I feel like this means Zarya has not processed fully the implications of them being. It's going to come later. And she it's is still. She's also faces. princess. Yeah. Well, I feel like yeah. we haven't really like. Um, we didn't really solve anything when like Arcana was like, "Please don't call me sis." So like, we didn't really get over that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I think this is gonna grow and we'll have to deal with it later. I really hope also, we deal with it later. Are we ever gonna get her mom back? <laughs> Jesus. No. <laughs> Never. Never getting mom Never. back. <laughs> yeah. Uh it's it's it, the, the that's something certain fans have been very frustrated by is the lack of the deboning of the parents. Yeah. Hasn't happened. We just don't care anymore. We're busy going on dates, finding our sisters and uh chasing glob monsters. That's that's what we're doing now. <laughs> Yep, that's it. Well, so I, I, I wonder if it'll be series finale or hopefully not series, but episode forty territory or uh, or sooner. Well, yeah, we'll see. Um, no, yeah, uh, other random thing. Arcana on the the date at Sky Pies is like, uh, or, or, or Malvron's like pretty cool. You guys defeated Necrafa and stuff, and she's like, go twin dragons. Uh, <laughs> They're so weird. Like, thank like, you I for was... the recap. <laughs> yeah, no, no more evil. By the way, no yeah, this sports. is sports. That's yeah, basically this, what that was. That was the, this is the uh, they the the heroes don't think there's uh, the the heroes think we're post uh, fin- show finale territory. Basically, is the concept of this episode because um, they don't know about Proxima yet. So, uh, I was so sure. Where's Proxima? <laughs> well, we'll see you next just, episode. I just watched that episode and I'm like so shook right now. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. And last, uh, Doug with the mouse traps. That was he's typical. He's so dumb. Doug. That he was Im- so funny. He like, sets- yeah, she's gonna go for the cheese. <laughs> he sets a bunch of mouse traps and immediately, yeah, activates like, all. This of them. is the dumbest idea ever. But that I was- wanna, I want to know why he put cheese on them. Like, why? <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you think? Do you think she's gonna be like, mm, like she's not a mouse? <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to talk about. I think the best scene in the ep- like animated, like animation wise, was when <laughs> Tasma grabs the quills and just flies. Like that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, the Chaco versus Little Tasma <laughs> sequence. Okay. I thought that was really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it's there. Yeah, there's still a few uh, really good moments there. We had another like uh, during the, one of the montages. We had another taking pictures. Um, we got that with the. The uh, pop singer episode, we had a montage with that, right. with uh, with them. Yeah, I, th- I, I think the snapshots device is still really cool. Um, I think I think we got everything here. Uh, Delaney, any uh, anything else slash final thoughts on Save the Date? Uh, Zarya is the best. She's a treasure, and I adore her. Um, I liked the episode. It was fun. It was silly. Uh, I do think the B plot was really good, and I liked how it like overlapped, and they literally all just ran into each other, like Scooby-Doo style. And I just little Tasma is so good. Like I am, I'm ready for more. And I'm so glad Mr. Collins is back. Yeah. I yeah. missed it. Yay. April final thoughts on this episode. Um, yeah. I'm also very glad that Mr. Collins is back. And uh, 
I think this was a good episode and a good starting off. And uh, hopefully we can just get much better things going forward. And where is Kitty? Bring her back. Um, I miss her. But I I really like what we're doing with Tasma right now. So because she's just sassy and it's wonderful um, and she's tiny. We can just put her in our pockets. But um also, I hope she gets another snowman. Um, but yeah, yeah, she needs one. <laughs> was it? I didn't. Friends. I didn't notice. Was it gone at the end? Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> that's sad. Yeah. No snowman, Jeff. No yeah. more snowman. R.I.P. Snowman, what, Jeff. What's our What's our thoughts on where Tasma's going? Are we buying into Taz Tasma Demption? Do we think that that's no, happening? No, it's not happening. No, really? it's not. It's not. <laughs> Do you think she's going to be a villain this season? Well, I think she's going to be like, um, I should be what I should be doing what Proxima. Like, I think she's going to be a very reluctant, like, ally. And then eventually, like, maybe she'll be like, chill. Her and Malvron need to have, like, a talk. But <laughs> they need um, to. They I think she's going to be very. I don't think she's going to be bad. I think she's going to be very reluctant to help. Yeah. I think yeah. I think they'll keep her tiny for this whole season. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I don't or know for about the rest that. of it. Well, I just can't like because Proxima is now our our big bad, and unless they're gonna do like Tasma versus Proxima for who's gonna be the villain, like which I don't think they'll do. I think she's just gonna be kind of there for comic relief, which is sad. And then maybe we'll get like her as our big bad, but I just I don't see it happening. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what we're doing with Tasma. I'm still still not sure. Could be interesting. <laughs> we'll never still, know. We'd we're like to see their it. their parents still. Um, Tasma. Oh Alvaro. yeah, yeah. Also, where is uh, Antiago? Where would she go? Yeah, honestly, is she? Oh, I guess she's okay. She's fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next week is happily never after. Um, the Mysticons. By the way, okay. Uh, take future episode descriptions with a grain of salt because this episode description talked about a makeup monster, and that was not what this episode was about. That is not what happened. No. Yeah. So, uh, Nick is Nick or Novan or whoever is writing these. Not good. But uh, this the the next week's description says the Mysticons must stop Proxima from acquiring Starfire Inc. from a legendary library, but they themselves they find themselves trapped in the librarian's magical tome. So there's a lot uh, going on there, <laughs> but so okay, so we find. I guess we find out that Proxima is the villain. So, so if you look at the preview clip next week, very quickly we'll get Proxima being a villain. Yes, and uh, you know I saw it. She looks like epic. Yeah, she's it's really what really I've fun seen to it. Yeah, I'm super. Ex- I'm gonna watch it when I get off. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it, it's really good. And uh, uh, are we gonna have washing? Like, are we gonna have like a giant owl? Like, that's my question. <laughs> that's a, all animated libraries need uh new giant, 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 giant animal guardian okay it just makes yeah sense. it's there's a, a lion a, this and description mem- uh, yeah the description mentions a librarian so um i don't know who the librarian is gonna be oh i'm trying to think of what's a super quiet animal <laughs> <laughs> and we're talking we're talking in the discord speculating why does proxima need ink magical ink what is she writing uh because this oh, is no is she gonna write like the book? bells what do you mean the the book? Because our our top speculation needle thought of this was uh, she writes her own codex. Right, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Ooh, I like yeah. that. This is her first thing that she's doing, basically after become she's, after putting on the mask. So like this this big. must be important. I like it. I think she might be writing her own codex. I don't remember exactly what happened to our codex. Did it get thrown back in the in the I portal we still and not come out? Or do we oh, have it no. now? Didn't it like? Something happened with Necrofa and it's no longer magic or something like that. I don't, I don't know. Either way, Proxima writing her own codex would be would be pretty interesting. I'm very intrigued by this uh, legendary library and the the librarian and them being trapped in a book. I don't know how we're going to do that. But. I was going to say, do you think we're going to? Yeah, I was going to ask if we were going to be like trapped in a story and then we had yeah, to and they tra- had to be like. Don't you remember how the story goes? And Zarya is probably going to be like, no, because I didn't have a childhood and. I was on a pirate ship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, librarian's magical tome. So yeah, that that seems like what we're doing. So, but we'll see next week. Happily never after. Very much looking forward to it. Let us know what you thought of save the date. Um, what are you are you shipping Arcana Malvaron? Uh, what do you think of their kiss? Are you an Uzi Q supporter? Defend her honor after we didn't like her this episode. <laughs> and uh, what would you buy at the Elven Craft Fair? Let us know that in the comments on, on YouTube. <laughs> 
we need to talk more about that. But uh, yeah, uh, subscribe to not miss our future Mysticons. Come talk about Mysticons with us in our Discords. This is the place to be for Mysticons discussion. Overlyanimated.com slash Discord. And uh, support us via Patreon, patreon.com slash Overly Animated. Thank you very much to all of our current patrons, especially our patron of the podcast, Damien, a.k.a. Diamond Day. And thanks as always to our patron executive producers, John Ryan, Steve Alex, Andy, and Hugh. Uh, other, a little bit of a quiet period at Overly Animated, but we still have um, Final Space. We're reaching the end of Final Space. Uh, this connection between Miscons and Final Space. Uh, Final Space also animated in Toon Boom. And that show is gorgeous. And uh, ep- oh, Chapter okay. 9 is coming online this week, and it's really good. And um, we had a Ladybug discussion from a while ago, although it's not new this week, contrary to what I said last week. So <laughs> no new Ladybug. Um, and potentially a new Craig of the Creek podcast coming up as well. So find all that at OverlyAnimated.com. Thank you guys very much for listening. We will all see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.